Hello, this is Rachel from 7 and All. I've had a number of requests to share what getting ready for a lesson of Math with Confidence looks like. So I'm gonna share my prep process, my simple and quick prep process for Math with Confidence with you today. I feel like this is a math curriculum that kind of has a reputation for being overwhelming or taking too much time from the teacher. Um, and a lot of people worry about trying to use it with multiple levels, multiple different ages of children. So I'm gonna be showing you my daily process for opening up the book and getting ready to do lessons in real life with my two kids. Of course, I'm not filming this on a school day um, so that you can hear what I'm saying in the video, um, but I'm gonna show you what my process looks like. All right, these are the two levels of Math with Confidence that I am currently using. So what my daily process looks like is that after breakfast, I'll send my boys off to play and I will be setting up for school for a few minutes, getting ready for the day, putting everything out on our table. I don't, I've been asked what weekly prep do I do for each week of Math with Confidence. I don't do any weekend or weekly prep at all for this curriculum. This is just daily, open it, get ready and go. So what I do is I pull out both teacher's guides. I flip to my handy dandy high tech paper clip that lets me know what lesson we're working on. And I just start reading through the lesson. I feel like this is definitely gonna take longer in a video format than it takes in real life. Because as you probably know, it takes less time to think about something than it does to explain something. Um, but I will fully admit, I never look at this. <laughs> skip right, I skip right past all the materials and everything, and I just read through the activities. So the review and warm up for today is a, you're drawing tally marks on paper and having your child match the tally marks that you draw with their fingers. And you can do that with a couple numbers. Great, that's easy. All I need is a piece of paper and a marker. Here we go, a piece of paper and a marker. This is just random scrap paper. Um, a homeschooler's secret weapon is having a cupboard or a shelf with random scrap paper on it at all times. And I do my school at our dining table. And if you've seen me do school, you know that my dining table is kind of surrounded by shelves of books and supplies. Everything I need for homeschool is either within reach of the dining table or a couple steps away. So it's all very easy to access. Then, okay, our main lesson activity is uh, play race to 10 with tally marks. I can tell from reading this that we're focusing on getting the idea of going one or two more, getting the hang of, oh, I know what two more than eight is, or I know what one more than five is. And we're practicing with that. That's a really good concept, definitely a concept that my child needs work in to gain confidence in. So we're going to be doing a little tally mark race. I'm sure I can use this same piece of scrap paper to keep track of our tally marks as we're doing that. And we are going to be needing some little scraps of paper with a one with ones and with twos on them. So on our turn, we're flipping over cards. If the card is one, we add one tally. If the card is two, we add two tallies. This sounds pretty familiar to me because yesterday we did this game, only it wasn't with tally marks, it was with 10 frames. So it's the same game. So I'm, it, it's, I don't have to like learn a whole new game. It's the same game. It's just applying it to now tally marks. So, okay, that's very easy. I have my one and two papers in my math box. Then the next activity will be finding one or two more with number cards. I need my number cards numbered one through 10, and we're just gonna go through them. I'm gonna ask what is one more than seven and go through all the different numbers. I can tell by looking at this. Granted, I have already used kindergarten math with confidence once, and it's fairly consistent, so it's pretty easy for me to know what the deal is here as I look at this lesson. So as far as my math box, I just have this handy dandy little box here. And here are my number cards, um, flash cards that we made the first time we went through kindergarten math with confidence that we are still using. I have a couple different sets, so they're in different colors. All the blue ones go to one set. I'll just quick pull those out. Now, sometimes Kate Snow will include details in here. Like for this activity, she says, you know, very specifically, remove the 10 from one set of number cards, and then they'll have a note of, okay, why are we taking out the 10? We're taking out the 10 so that your child doesn't have to think that extra step to knowing that 11 is one more than 10 or 12 is two more than 10. I appreciate that they really are that thoughtful and that specific in the way they write their curriculum, 
however myself in how I use it, I don't really worry about those kind of details. I'm not going to put the necessarily the mental energy into making sure that 10 is not in the deck. Um, I'm actually, I think it'll be, my son will be fine if we figure out what number is one more or two more than 10. That works for him. Um, I'm not going to worry about that. I don't stress about following instructions to every last letter. So that's simple. All I need is paper and a marker and the number cards for that lesson. And then he will end it with his, uh, the workbook. The workbook page always comes at the end. Now I take a look at the second grade math with confidence. In here, I've got my paper clip once again. We're on lesson 7.3, counting and mental math with numbers up to 200. Again, I don't really worry about what's all on here. <laughs> I go straight to the warm up. I look at what, what is all part of the warm up. Now, this son is fairly advanced in math, so I don't typically do all aspects of the review at this point because a lot of this, it's just not needed for him. He's very quick with it. I usually do some though, because I do think it's good to do these quick drills. I will do, what do we call the result when we add numbers together, the sum. What do we call the result when we subtract a number from another number, the difference. I think working on continuing to master that vocabulary is very good. Um, and I'm sure he would love to play addition bingo, but he's very good at adding. He doesn't need to play addition bingo, so I might skip it. I do play the games in the curriculum, um, but I don't necessarily repeat them as often as the curriculum suggests that you do. Adjust it to the child that's in front of you um, and what they need. If he needed more practice with addition, I'd be happy to do it. He doesn't need it, um, so we move on. All right, so the activity is counting by ones, twos, fives, and tens to 200. And it instructs you to get out your 200 chart black line master. Uh, and I have not made copies of any of the black line masters, but I know I don't have to because they're right in the back of the book. So I can just head back here to the black line master and people might point out, well, if you're using this one in the back of the book, how are you gonna know what number she says for your child to count from because it says, oh, count by fives from 125 to 144, 145 or count by tens from 160 to 200. So she does give you examples. I, I don't stress out about needing the exact examples. I'll just go to the 200 chart and I'll remember, okay, he's counting by ones, twos, fives, and tens. That's plenty easy. We just come back here, focus on that. I don't have to worry about remembering the specific numbers. I'll just have him practice some of that counting from between 100 and 200. Because the idea here isn't focused on these specific numbers, it's focused on the skill that we're building. Then the next activity is mental math with numbers to 200. So this is laying the foundation for the child that, hey, numbers above 100 are not actually inherently harder to use than numbers below 100. Uh, which is really great for kids because kids can look at a problem like 137 plus 40 and they think, whoa, that's way harder than 37 plus 40, but it's really not. So that, that was the idea that we were trying to get, lay the foundation for right here. And then we have another activity to work on that and prepare that idea. And here she suggests that you get out, play money and model a problem. Um, talking about money and adding $32, $34 plus $2. Now, uh, I probably wouldn't get out the money with this particular child. Um, with some children who struggle more with math or who really need the visuals, I might get out the money. I have the money in my play in my math box. We do get out the money for some things, but to me, this activity wouldn't so specifically need the money to you know, really get the point across. I think it's easy enough for the point to come across with this particular student that I won't get out the money, but I'll probably show him this diagram in the book. The really neat thing is that they have a lot of diagrams in the books. So there are definitely times when I will just show my child the diagram. Hey, look, we've got three tens, four ones. We've got another two ones right here. I'll show them the diagram in the book rather than getting it out and building it with manipulatives. That's one way to streamline, streamline things, especially if you have a student or a child who doesn't necessarily need to build everything to understand it. And I'll just scribble these problems down for him on a piece of paper, 27 minus three and 127 minus three, and kind of just talk through, hey, isn't it neat how 
this problem is not actually really any harder than this problem. So if you can do this, that means you can also do this. Hey, that's cool. And then we'll get his workbook and he'll finish that. I did want to quick show you the workbooks because I have them set up a little bit differently. For my older son, we use a workbook in the normal expected way with a pencil because by second grade, you're doing some fair amount of writing, filling in the answers, and the boxes are getting a little smaller. So he does it with a pencil. With my younger son, I put the Kindergarten Math with Confidence workbook in a binder back when I first used it so that I could reuse it because there's very little writing and the spaces are big, so it's easy enough for them to do it with a dry erase marker. And this way I can reuse the same workbook for child after child. And it also makes it very easy to erase with a young one who is just, you know, just getting the hang of writing numbers or just getting the hang of this. Um, it makes erasing very easy. So I do have the workbooks set up slightly differently, but we pull them out, they work through them, and that's math. If you have any questions, um, feel free to leave them in the comments down below, but I definitely want to encourage you, if you're thinking about math with confidence, it does not have to be as complicated as sometimes people might make you think it is. Uh, it's very, very doable, and I've discovered this even through using two levels at the same time. All right, I'll see you next time. Bye.